Hey everybody, welcome back to Koali Beach episode 32. Today I'm here with Rudy Renkamel. Hi Rudy. Hi Solf, how are you doing? I am I am doing fine actually, how are you? Uh, well, I'm a little bit stressed out because I'm in Berlin at the moment, sitting in my hotel room and just came back from uni, 10 hours of uni today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, right. I'm, I'm just comfy in, in, my, in my own bedroom and everything is kind of chill. So I suppose we're in very kind of different locations in that sense. Yeah. So at least my hotel room this time is really good. It's really good. You're, you're booking a different hotel every time? Yeah, because of prices and stuff. Ah, oh, right. Oh, like that's it's... good to hear. And before we go on, actually, I do want to quickly say the lady designer isn't here. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to look for her texts. Basically, she promised her boyfriend that uh, she and him would have a, a special night or something tonight. So I'm not sure what they're up to. But in any case, um, other issues in life and obviously maintaining a relationship is much more important than Planet Coaster. So... I said that serious. Sorry if I sounded very sarcastic on that line. Uh, I wasn't. I was just self-deprecating humor. And in any case... <laughs> um, I, I was it. laughing for a different reason, but I shouldn't go into it, so it's fine. You sure? Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine, it's fine. It's it's sad that she's here, but it's really it's really important to keep like your real real life uh, relationships um, working properly, so... Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, and uh, not not play too much Planet Coaster and, you know, have other social activities completely fall behind. <clears throat> in any case, I uh, today I'm working in the area around the mine train since there wasn't really anything around here. The main goal that I, I set off for this episode, by the way, was to go around the empty areas of the park and fill in the areas that were still empty in an attempt to sort of get to a more finished Kohana Beach. And I sort of let myself down here because I um, <laughs> I only got to one of these areas and I didn't even have time to go to the rest. So I'll only be sticking in this area. But that said, I will be adding a lot of detail to this area. And the first thing that I wanted to go for is a small drink shop. It's not really a restaurant or anything. It's really just a stall that's disguised as a way to make this feel more like a town. Um, and it's a, it's a little pip shot juice i think that's what it's called stall with a small building around it i totally love that building actually it's 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 simple yet really cool i also love how the the little pillars on the left hand side with those bells hanging down and the lamps that kind of gives it a little bit of a um different touch like it's not that straight mm -hmm. by those and it also has kind of and i i, I do just take it as as really serious uh, note to it. it it has a little bit of african style to it which is just a little bit um as a touch to it but i think it fits really well into because then with the fat roof and with those wooden stuff we, we get bit back into the area where we are and this is looking really nice oh thank you i was actually yeah that was one of my main worries while i was building this i was really just randomly plopping stuff together. Usually that's not a, an approach that I'm a fan of. I like to at least blend my stuff ahead in my mind a little bit more, but in this case I was just starting off with something and randomly adding ideas to it. Until at a certain point I was really afraid that it was going to look too African. And it definitely kind of does in a sense, but hopefully the, the context of the Polynesian atmosphere around here will bring that back into the theme a little bit more. And also there is actually going to be another building in this build which has completely different style of architecture but that's not really something i should go into right now actually oh, actually it's, yeah it's really cool looking and i think the the thing about just going in and then plopping down does work for koali quite good because i think um which is on the one hand side we talked about this in the last episode might be also a bad reason but it's also a good thing we are really used to this kind of architecture right now because we used it so often and so i think you just nail it because you also are used to you know get it together like we've done it for the whole time in quality beach so mm -hmm. yeah it I is always a cool thing a challenge. Also it, it is definitely a challenge to come up with new ways to use the items in ways that look very different from what we've been doing. And I think we've also mentioned the fact that it's becoming harder and harder to come up with new stuff as a reason to end Quali Beach pretty soon. 
But um, overall, yeah, I'm quite glad with how it turned out, even if it had some slightly different influences all around the place. I actually found some sort of inspiration again in uh, Lone Wolf's builds on Shy Guy's World, which are just amazing because they use this woodwork a lot, place all kinds of clutter around and even though they might not be as interesting architecturally because they're usually quite simple and down to earth, I think that just makes it work all the better for theme parks because it's something that you'd be more able to afford in a theme park. Not every building is a huge Disney castle or some big weenie, if you will, um, but a lot of buildings are, especially in theme parks, not really that interesting architecturally and just around for their one use of being a shop and just inviting and just being part of the scene. And I guess that's that's really the role of this building here. Yeah, it is. Hey, I, I just know that texture, but by the way, yeah. this concrete texture does seem to be very... But yeah, just back to your point, I'm uh, yeah totally with you and also I know his buildings as well. I just recently stepped back into Shiga's world a little bit, I even though I didn't add anything, but I just wanted to take a little bit of time and go through it because I haven't been there for months. But uh, actually, I think there was also somebody mentioning it. Um, some buildings in the theme park are so important, you they are there but when they are gone you would definitely notice that they're missing mm -hmm. and i guess that's kind of a building like that you know it, it's there because it's a shop and you need it uh, but it would be um, away it would be missing because it's like kind of an empty space but if it would be too fancy it might be displaced right i think that's also a fairly interesting thing to to take into account when building a theme park that you can't always go for like just fancy buildings yeah, it's, it's very it's just impossible. impossible because make the fancy buildings fancy then when everything else is fancy as well. I think uh, somebody told me a long time ago um, that you can't see the detail if there are no places without detail. And you don't really notice how amazing some buildings are if the rest of the buildings aren't very much toned down to bring the attention to the buildings that you're supposed to bring your attention to. So yeah, there's, ver yeah. there's very much an important point there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's just like in life, right? If you you wouldn't have any bad f experiences, you wouldn't even know what are good experiences. Like, <laughs> right? We're we're totally getting Buddhism too in here. Of, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's skip to theme parks again. Yeah, that's that's uh, what. He, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> there, there there was the bit about the concrete texture that I ripped from you because that concrete texture is so damn good. It just. It just fits perfectly and it also kind of made me realize how well the textures do work for path textures because you don't really need the light to interact in any special ways with path textures you don't really right yeah. need super reflective textures or very toned down textures i think it works just right compared to the in-game textures so yeah it just i also looks tried spectacular. My so yeah we have this this bit of stone path to fill in the plaza in the middle over here and i just wanted to bring some tables and stuff into that area. So there's just a tiny space where you can take your drinks from the pip shot store, whatever it's called. I think I called it on Tropic, which is a terrible name. <laughs> I should I should replace that maybe with some better name someday. Also the mine train still needs a name. But yeah, um, it's just a little place where you can sit down. I noticed, especially when I, uh, I went to Walibi recently, that places to sit down is something that you don't really think about in a theme park, but it's something you really need a lot of. Mm-hmm. Yo, yep, yep, definitely. I mean, oh, you're doing a new parasol. That's cool. I, uh, this is not mine, actually. Uh, this is th the idea to use these cloths was taken from uh, CTR Sind. You might know him as Ryan over at Chai Guys World. So total props to him for coming up with this idea because they look amazing. I don't want to take I mean, that's it so cool. I mean, you, you just know like nearly everybody you, you just <laughs> grabbed ideas from. That's cool. I mean, it's, it's good. <laughs> To mention them but i would forget about some names actually <laughs> but i'm bad at names generally so oh I, I am horrible at names as well it's just that maybe i've been in these corners for a little bit too long something like that he actually did appear on that on bro coaster as well which is an amazing episode maybe i should stop plugging bro coaster but <laughs> <laughs> i'll link that somewhere in the description if i don't forget quali beach featuring comments about bro coaster <laughs> <laughs> Just just watch the complete series and, and take a pina colada every time somebody yeah. mentions Bro Coaster. 
Oh damn, I don't want to be no. No, don't don't do this guys because maybe we get problems afterwards with kind of <laughs> legal <laughs> issues because people drinking themselves. Uh Yeah, I'm not sure if those exist even. I'm not sure if you can get into legal issues because of uh forcing people to do drinking games that are actually a terrible idea. Maybe that's maybe that's something to do research on. Surely somewhere in the deep dark corner of the internet yeah. somebody's somebody sussed this out. In any case, um <laughs> back to the park. I wanted to get to a few of the paths that you were working on here since they didn't have any borders. I think I was the person who removed the borders though, so uh my bad, I guess. Um but I at least wanted to fill in this area with a bit of simple detailing to bring all of the different paths together. <laughs> That's pretty cool, yeah. Actually, I just have to jump into this point because I was quite a little bit of a discussion last time in the comments, like me leaving a lot of gaps to you guys, um, which which kind of exploded to into a topic which isn't that big for us, I guess. Um, totally true that I left some some rooms uh, for you guys, uh, but so last episode I took myself into building also some. You know, for example, this toilet over here and and stuff like that. And also, I just remembered recently that I did the the temple to fill the area between the boomerang coaster and the um, what's the the ra river rapids, right? Mm -hmm. I guess it's the one where I built the temple in. And I think uh, I also love those episodes, especially where you are going to spend your eye on 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 path and foliage, because I think you are really like the king of foliage and, and path interaction with all these kind of stuff and I'm, I'm not sure if i would like to call myself that but it's something i'll refer to later on in this episode for sure like uh, let's call it you're the king out of our threes uh in terms of that maybe if that makes you feel better a little bit um, I don't know. i'll go back on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but never mind i just wanted to mention that um because it, it's it sounded a little bit harsh in our comments mm -hmm. but even though it's i think it's a fine topic for us right right i definitely agree i think what really sparked it that i was uh moaning again in the last episode about rudy always adding big projects and having to fill up the gaps between those big projects it's more or less just the way that we are doing koala beach and i was just mocking that um, just for fun, and um, we're both on the same line in terms of that. Because like he said, I do think my best role is just to fill in the different areas and sort of bring areas together, fill in the gaps here and there, add some foliage and path work here and there. And uh, Rudy's best served to actually bring in the new projects because he just, you just bring the, the best creative ideas and every time you have an episode, there's something really new and exciting happening which I and Lady can just, you know, go further with. Like last episode, you, you built the golf cars, got the new textures in, some backstage elements that we didn't have before. And it's just all kinds of stuff that we can build further from. So really, it's not really something that I'm mad about at all. In fact, it's just the way that Quali Beach works. And it's the way that I think we're all using uh, what we're best at in, in, you know, compared to each other. Like, yeah, totally agree on that. I think that's kind of cool thing to mention as well because that's basically how collaborations in general should work. Like it, it wouldn't be, I mean, it could be fun if you're all exactly the same kind of type, but I don't know if that would take you any further then. Mm -hmm. Because if you, it's like in a good team, you always need different, different persons with with different skills. Oh yeah, definitely. So, I think that's also a fun part. And you know, I'm also like, I, I'm, I'm really, I can, I really can laugh about myself. I'm, I'm totally into this. Like, you know, I'm, I'm always going into our chats and uh, just, you know, bringing, especially you, to get a little bit of a heart attack by just mentioning that I might bring in a new coaster in the next episode, <laughs> <laughs> even though I'm not. But right, yeah, that's true. I actually just kind of realized that. Um... The way this does kind of work is that usually you kind of bring in, in in the new big projects and stuff. I fill in a lot of gaps and if it weren't for Lady, then this park would not be fit for families whatsoever. Um, because she's actually bringing in <laughs> yeah. a lot more of the family entertainment that we always forget about. Like flat ride skinning and doing mini golf, that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely bringing in, you know, comparati comparatively what certain people are best at. That's what a collaboration should all be about. Okay, now I'm into what you meant by weenie. Yeah, this Sorry is... to just completely... 
<laughs> Holy shit, that's That's nice. the weenie that I forgot to record. Oh, wow. I lost over, <laughs> over an hour of recording there because I yeah, completely I forgot to hit the record button. So that was kind of a shame. Oh, but, um, but you got really quick at building. Yeah, the, yeah I, I actually got quick at building for once because I, I should probably mention I was an extreme slowpoke while doing this episode. Lodi. Uh, Lodi. Um, Lodi. <laughs> A lady was telling me for days to finish off that episode and send the park file to her. And uh, damn, I was slacking on this. It, things just kept take, kept taking me longer than I expected. Um, but yeah, but back to the temple, I suppose. Um, it's a building that's inspired by Balinese temples that you'll see in Indonesia. You'll, you've probably seen some pictures of it, right? They're those big sort of straw temples with all of these different floors and they're super tall. And actually, a little bit thinner than than you usually would expect. Oh yeah, yeah, they're like, they're like narrow sprites almost. Yeah, that's uh, really cool. I, I mean, I do like it. I, I actually, it's it's just remember, just rem um, how the word I just forgot about the word. Never mind. Um, it just shows me again how much influences from different architectures are in this kind of areas all around. Like we were talking about the Spanish, or uh, sorry, not Spanish, the, the African uh, inspired building beforehand and now this could also be considered to be a little bit more asian inspired you know mm -hmm. and it's really cool to see i actually going more and more deep into it that kind of brings out how many different styles of architecture go into it but in in general in the whole picture it kind of definitely makes sense as kind of the polynesian architecture that's pretty cool yeah and i would say actually that uh the polynesian style of architecture that we are going for is already kind of a mismatch uh it's a mishmash, isn't it? Uh, yeah. It's already <laughs> kind of a mishmash. I, I guess a mismash is a mishmash that doesn't really work out. Um, it's, so it's a mit. So, sorry, I'll see myself out. <laughs> In any case, um, it's, it's a bit of a mishmash because it's not an architectural style that really exists in real life. It's something that you'll find in Disney's Polynesian village. It, it's very Disney-esque in general. It's something mm -hmm. that you'll find in TV shows, movies, that kind of stuff. But there is no singular Polynesian style. It's like saying there's European architecture. It's, it is already kind of a weird mix of different things. And it's eclectic in that sense. So I, I guess bringing in different influences like that into, into a theme like this is quite fine. And to be honest, there are some theme parks in real life which claim to have Asian sections and their buildings look nothing like Asian architecture. So yep. <laughs> comparatively speaking, I suppose Kuala Beach is doing all right on that front. Yeah, it definitely is. Definitely. I mean, I like the way how it turned out in general. Like the whole picture of the park is just incredibly well. And um, I, I also think that um, it doesn't ma really matter if that's an, a real kind of style of architecture or if that would be like inspired by a theme park kind of architecture. I mean, like theme parks in general can be considered as an example for a special kind of architecture. Mm -hmm. Bring in a totally new concept in terms of, of a park layout and of a, like a, a really separated world in that kind of sense, because they have like kind of all elements, for example, the city would have. So, you know, there is kind of the, the city center, there is kind of the, you know, service area and stuff like that you know what i'm trying to get at so it, it is kind of a real term to be considered that a theme park I'm brings not, out a new kind of architecture yeah i'm not sure if i'm exactly on the same point i definitely agree though that theme park architecture is completely different from regular architecture but personally i feel like um it's more of a it's more of a like buildings in theme parks aren't standing on themselves as much as buildings in real life are because you're uh, designing everything along with the landscape and along with the buildings around it and along with all kinds of factors that you don't really have in a regular city so it's more like oh yeah that, buildings yeah, are just sure. part of the scenery in yeah, that yeah that's, that's for sure i just wanted to try to to point out that um a theme park as kind of environment is also mm -hmm. able to bring out new kind of architecture styles because of their challenges so yeah. That is fair. The style we go for just exists because it works good for a theme park. Which is definitely true. There are actually some interesting things. One of the most interesting uh, things about architecture in theme parks is that you don't really have to care 
about people being inside them. <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. Yeah. That's that's probably the one single most important thing. Like if you look at the temple, for instance, that could not be a real Balinese temple because you simply would not be able to get inside of it. Yep, totally. And also not get to the top of it. Oh yeah, it's, it's spring in any stairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially yes. with that uh, that forced perspective, I suppose, which you might know from Disney's Main Streets, for instance. Yeah, uh, yeah. Use forced perspective on each floor. So every consecutive floor on Main Street buildings in Disney is slightly smaller than the one before it, to the point where the top floor of a Disney building would be way too small for a regular pil uh, person to fit in. Oh yeah, and I've got a feeling that if you might look into the comments that a guy called DL Fendel will definitely have some added information for you guys out there. <laughs> so make sure to watch the comment section <laughs> what Mr. DL Fendel has to say about this topic. <laughs> so, That's a very good he... point. I've actually uh, uh, I've gotten some comments about that from King RCT3 uh, quite a few times already as well. So uh, maybe we'll see some, some teaming up in the comment section happening about hmm. Disney trivia. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I also got a little bit more into it and also watched all these kind of documentaries about the first Disney park in California um, and what they also used the buildings for later on, like having control rooms in there. And, you know, later on, they also faced the fact that the upper floor wasn't able to be used as a control room because it was too small. And then they had kind of cooling <laughs> systems in there and stuff like that. So it's, it's pretty cool how, how they just used this kind of stuff. Right. Yeah, it's, it, they are really interesting parks. And they're, they're also some of the, the first theme parks. So I like personally, I feel that makes those podcasts and documentaries and all kinds of videos about Disney even more interesting because it's, it's sort of seeing the theme park industry grow. Surely there are more theme parks that, used for, that use Force Perspective in a similar vein. But Disney was the park to sort of establish and kickstart it all. So they were trying to find their feet. And that's why I think, yeah, especially those documentaries are interesting because they make mistakes and it shows even more how brilliant that kind of stuff was. Like the first oh, car yeah. ride uh, I remember in Disney, uh, you know those car rides where you're on a yeah, guided yeah. reel? The first one didn't have that guided reel. So people were just crashing into each other and it was mayhem. So Disney kind of le learned from that to actually put those reels on the ride. It's that kind of stuff which just makes you think outside the box a little bit more and kind of appreciate that, you know, they, they had to start from nowhere with coming up with this kind of stuff. Yeah. And Sylph, by the way, at the moment, you're kind of destroying our frame rate even more, aren't you? <laughs> so, man, yeah. what are you doing with the foliage? <laughs> it wasn't too bad, actually. It's, no, it, yeah. it's way oh, by less the way, trees, the actually, than, than my regular sort of small section of foliage, because they're, they're just trees. No bushes or anything. Uh, did you have um, kind of an improvement from the latest update, by the way, about uh, the... They, they claimed, especially in parks with uh, lots of pieces, it should be a little bit better. Well, I, I'm not sure. I had, a little, I had a little bit of a problem, so I couldn't even test it that good. So I need to check it next time. But Right. Yeah, I, I yeah. tried oh, it. Oh, you, you did? Yeah, I did some lighting stuff as well, which is... Uh, pretty fun but yeah I, I tried it but um, I tried to see if the frame rate was better but when I first opened the game it wasn't on paused mode I, I wasn't even realizing that and it was on less than 11 frames per second which was kind of horrible and I'm at about 20 frames per second paused which I think isn't that much better than what it used to be but I'm not entirely sure on that so I'll really have to check that I mean but maybe quality isn't the best example to I mean to no, to that's, test this that's very fair. This is ridiculous in terms of, of piece count. And I, I do have to say that I think um, in comparison to what we've experienced, especially in Alpha and later on at the beginning of, of the fully released game as well, um, you wouldn't be able to run this park. And quite yet, after a few updates, we are still able to run this park. I mean, without guests, but for me at least, I, I mostly used my parks without guests. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lady can still run it fine, but yeah, that's that's totally true. So, I think that's a good point. I think the thing that makes it so that the last update isn't helping as much, though, as some of the other performance updates is, from what I remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I remember Andy say, was that he worked on the building pieces, so building pieces uh, should be less heavy as soon as you have many of them in a park, but since 
Our lag is probably stemming mostly from trees and particle effects, that sort of stuff. I think that's not included in making the performance better in the latest updates. I'm not entirely sure anymore how it works, but it was something like that. Yeah, that, that's totally fair. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, for uh, are we are already through. Yeah, we are, right? So Yeah, we're done with the time lapses. So um, I guess we're done with this, this episode. I would actually love to end it with one last shout out. I'm not even sure if I shouted this out yet. So I'm just giving this again in Quali Beach. I know, I think I did it in the last, latest grapefruit, but big shout out to Bro Basics, which is, yeah, I'm doing this again, <laughs> which is <laughs> the sort of tutorial uh, series from Bro Coaster. Their latest video, Bro Basics number two about nature was a really great episode. We've both watched it and it's definitely something that's been going into my mind much more consciously recently. It's a great episode about doing foliage and it's something that's uh, really influencing my foliage. Um, and what you said about me being the foliage king is something that I definitely don't want to accept because I have to pass it over to Mr. N7 from Pro Coaster <laughs> because if there's anybody passionate about gardening and foliage, it's him. Um, totally true. Yeah, I, I kind of forgot for a second about him, but yeah, that's basically the only reason why I already knew him before. That's, I mean, like he was really one of the only ones I remembered from my days back at Roller Coaster Dragon 3. Oh yeah, yeah, he made a lot of custom scenery for that game as well. Yeah, basically that's also why. Um, but uh, we, we can't end it right here, so if we have forgotten to say something, I guess, yeah. about a little bit of a contest. This is a very good point. Um, so who's going to start this? <laughs> we didn't exactly prepare this. Uh, no, but I, I think um, you were already mentioning that, for example, there is uh, something missing. We don't have a name for the mine train coaster and stuff like that. But even more important, we don't have a logo for the park. Oh, no. I think there's there's something coming up to fix that issue, isn't it? Yeah. You want to maybe explain people what this is? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm, I'm, okay. Then I'll try my yeah. best anyway. Okay, no. So our idea is as follows. We're going to do a contest. And this time it's not a contest inside Planet Coaster itself. Not a contest to design anything in Planet Coaster, but a contest to design a logo for Kuali Beach. And we're going to announce a top 10. We'll also make a video of it. And for the winner of this contest, we actually have a lot of amazing stuff. Frontier which was I able to actually support us on this, which is amazing. Yeah, and, and now a little bit of the data stuff, guys. Um, I mean, the, the most important thing, the stuff you can get is actually a goodie bag, um, a signed Planko edition, including the DLCs, and as well as an Expo ticket for the Frontier Expo. Oh, so if you can make it, you Expo? also have... The Frontier Expo is a big event taking place the 7th of October this year in London and uh, there will be amazing stuff going on like everything about Planet Coaster, also Elite Dangerous and um, yeah kind of everything Frontier does as well as some other cool stuff going on and live streams and you can meet a lot of great people being there and yeah also meet a lot of persons and, and well-known mates from Frontier themselves. So it's actually pretty cool if you can make it there. Um, yeah, if not, there's still the goodie bag, the signed Planko edition and the DLCs. Yeah. Um, and all, all you have to do is to send in um, your layouts. And it's uh, important maybe to mention that you consider having it a PNG file because we will have to use it for a few different uh, occasions. And so we might need a DLC file, uh, a PNG file, sorry. Um, until the 12th of August, which is in is it one week's time, a little bit less than one week's time, right? Uh, no, it's exactly in one week's time. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's cool. Um, it's six days from when I'm uploading yeah. this video, though. Oh, that's right. So that yeah, we are yeah, okay. That's fine. So in six days, and the winner will be announced the 23rd of August. Then. Right. Oh, you actually you were way better than that than I was. So. Thanks, man. That was, I, that was great. I just had a nice message in front of me. Too. Oh, you did? Yeah, I was yeah. about to say, you'd think that you actually prepared that. Yeah, I, I, I did it while recording. I just, you know, took my phone and, and 
Oh, nice. <laughs> oh yeah, I was lurking a bit. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, guys, I think that's a pretty cool thing to do. I would love to do it, but I can't take. Yeah, unfortunately. Although the expo is going to be amazing. I'm not sure if I'm going to be there, but it's also going to have a huge Planet Coaster community meetup. So, like like Rudy said, there will be a lot of Planet Coaster related people, including, correct me if I'm mistaken, Rudy himself and Lady. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Today I got actually today I got the confirmation from Uni that I can go. So that's cool. Oh, that's so awesome. I just have to sort out all the stuff with, with, you know, flights and stuff like that, but that will somehow work, I'm sure. Yeah, I should say, I'm, I'm still waiting on that confirmation myself, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to go, but I definitely hope so. And if there's any op opportunity for me to just screw university over and go there anyway, I would definitely love to take it, so... Oh yeah, we'll I'd, also, I'd also love to do, uh, again, stuff with you two together, like meeting up together, Again, like, oh, even more than one year ago from Gamescom, but anyways, um, pretty cool. Yeah, and um, I think that's all we have to say about the uh, contest. I know it's on very short notice, but it's also in part because Koali Peach ending is on very short notice. We're not going to reveal anything else about this quite yet, but we do have lots of video works in our plans and a bit of a schedule for it. So there's going to be lots of content popping up about it and hence also why this logo is very strictly fitting in that schedule of content. Yeah, definitely. And and a big shout out also to Lady again because she's always trying to get uh, both of us into <laughs> into a schedule which is not yeah. that easy. Uh, so which is which is good actually. Yeah, we, yeah, it's really good because it's a little bit hard with the two of us. <laughs> We're, we're I really even more that. chaotic than this video might make you think. Actually, scrap that. This video is already quite chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All um, right. I think that's cool. really it. Yeah, that's it. I'm not sure how I'm going to feel all this time. Maybe I'll get a, a ton of footage in or something. But in any case, um, so my, my, my words just sort of melted together in that sentence. But in any case... That's it for Kuali Beach episode 32. Rudy, thank you so much for being here again. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Man. You're welcome. Of course, it's always great to have you in here. And um, to you, the viewers, I would like to say thank you for watching. Uh, thanks for sticking in this weird episode that got very hurriedly put together. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to make some awesome logos. Good luck with the contest. Um, and yeah. That's basically all that's to say. Goodbye, guys, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Quality Beach. Bye-bye.